So we have some fixes to add to some of the routes within our authentication system. And this mainly relates to redirecting a user. Now, most of the time this is going to be okay and I'll try and explain why this is necessary. Uh, if we go over to our account and profile route, this is the route, remember, where we update our uh, profile details. We have the route here to display the page and then we have our post route just here, uh, which allows us to actually update the user's details when they're authenticated. And if we scroll down here, we can see if the validation passes, we go ahead and update the user. So using auth on our container and we go ahead and flash a message and then we redirect the user on this line. Now, what we didn't do throughout the series is actually use return on this. And the reason that this is important is because when we are in a kind of critical stage of our, of our application where we have to maybe um, you, you know, do a quick if statement here and if maybe a token doesn't match, we want to redirect the user off somewhere. Um, if this line fails for any reason, or rather if uh, the script executes beyond this line, then we're in trouble because we could actually uh, run into some security considerations here. And the reason we can use return within this is because we have a closure here, which is our function. And obviously within a function, we can return a value. Now, as soon as you return a value within a function, nothing beyond that executes. So rather than just relying on using app response redirect, we're actually going to go through and add return anywhere that we're redirecting uh, within our closure just here. So I've just done the first one. That's the only uh, redirect that we're doing within here. But what we're going to do is go through to all of the other routes and just check uh, that we don't have any more of these and we're going to just add some more returns. So you don't have to follow along the rest of this video, but I'm going to go through each of the routes that we've created, add these returns in where they're necessary, and I'll kind of explain along the way uh, why this is necessary. And then, uh, you know, if you don't want to follow along, that's fine. You can just go through and manually add them yourself. So uh, into auth here, this is probably uh, one of the most important places we can do this because we've got things like changing the user's password, recovering and recovering users tokens. So let's uh, handle the password first. So we've got password change. If we just scroll down here, you can see that we've got a redirect just here if the validation passes. Uh, again, this one isn't as important because otherwise you would just uh, hit this line here and that wouldn't be too much trouble. So we've cleared up that one there. We'll just make sure that we've got no other uh, redirects in here We and we don't. So for the password recovery, uh, let's go ahead and just look down here and we'll see here if the user doesn't exist when we look them up by the email address that's that's passed through here, uh, we're actually redirecting off. And we need to add a return here for sure because uh, if, for example, this executes beyond this line, uh, we may get into trouble. In this case, it wouldn't matter too much because uh, we're just within an if statement here uh, and this else would never be hit otherwise. So uh, inside of here, we've got another redirect just here. So let's add a return in there. And this one looks good. So for resetting the password, then if we just scroll down, you can see we've got quite a few here and these are probably the most important. So we've got if no user, so if the user doesn't exist, we're going to go ahead and return this. Uh, if the recovery hash isn't available, we're going to return this. And then again, within this, more importantly, if the hash doesn't match when we use the hash check function or method rather, then we want to return the redirect just here. And I'm not testing these out along the way because it won't make any difference, but feel free to go back and you know test each of these steps if you just want to make sure nothing is broken. So again, into this uh, part of the password reset just here, uh, we have the same kind of checks from we duplicated these down a little bit, and we're just gonna return each of these redirects just in here. And if we scroll down, we've got one more redirect if the validation passes. And there we go, we've done that one. So for activation, again, we're using a hash uh, identifier just here to check. So we are checking if there is no user, so if the user can't be found, or if uh, the hash doesn't match, so we can return a redirect there. And then here we can also return this redirect. So we've done this one now. So for login, again, let's scroll down and check what we're doing in here. So we're checking if the password uh, is uh, valid and we're redirecting the user off telling them that they're signed in and here we have could not log you in and again we can just add a return on here these don't matter as much but 
it's good to have them in there anyway, just for consistency. Uh, logging out again, not massively important, but we'll keep consistency and add our return just in there. And then for registration as well, we're going to want to update uh, this redirect just here. And that should be everything in there. Perfect. So for errors, we don't need to worry about 404 because we're just rendering a view here. Uh, all users doesn't matter and profile doesn't matter because uh, we're not necessarily doing anything in here like redirecting. So they are our root changes. Um, hopefully you understand why this is important. The main thing to realize is that your script could execute past a redirect if you're not actually returning uh, within this closure within our root. So that's uh, another quick fix. Hopefully it will just add to the security and consistency of your PHP authentication application.